Answer questions, man. Answer, uh, let me get some questions. Oh, nobody gives a fuck who I am. <laughs> Hi everyone, Samuel here. Welcome back to another video. So I'm here today in London to answer your questions and recently I asked you to send me your questions for a Q&A. That is because we recently hit 40k on this channel, which is crazy. So thank you so much for your support. And I think there are a lot of new people here who don't really know what this channel is about. Maybe they don't know much about me. So let's go straight to the questions. And I think it's also nice that I'm outside. I was thinking about doing this in my dark room at home, but I think it's nicer to be outside. So, let's go. So, first question, uh, actually two questions from Jerry Adam. Uh, what external recorder <laughs> did you use in the 243550 video? Which one would you recommend? Um, so, I use uh, an external recorder from Atomos. It's the Atomos Ninja Blade. And I connected a HDMI cable with an HDMI to is it mini or micro? I'm not sure. I think it's mini to my XH1 and that's how I record my screen. Um, and then he asks, are we going to see some more POV viewfinder street photography videos again? I'm not sure to be honest because they take a lot of storage space. And the thing is, I need to uh, press record on the external recorder and then put it in my backpack, run around like a Robocop and it feels very weird doing street like that so I'm not sure and also I'm not using my XH1 to shoot stills anymore um, but I might do one again but I can't promise anything right now okay next question is from Brian Hansel uh, congrats the video of Q&A covering composition would be fun what's your approach to composition what do you look for for an image what is my approach to composition so when I was uh, starting with photography I was very uh, what is the word meticulous yeah and exact where how my composition should be and I was so like aware of my edges, you know, I used to align lines to go right into the edge. But nowadays I don't care too much. I think the more you do it, the more you get a feel for good composition. And you know what feels right. Like for example, rule of thirds work because we feel it's harmonious. It looks, it looks and feels nice, but it doesn't need to always be like that. So I think you, the more you practice, the more you will get a feel for good composition. So. I guess my approach is just go with my feelings, like how I feel about the scene. I might include something in the background, in the edge, because it adds to the story. So when I see a subject, and it's my main subject, then I try to see what is in the background. Maybe here this tower, uh, should I include it or not? Because obviously it tells a story. Uh, we are in London, so you know when you see this, that we are in London. Stuff like that. I don't know if this answered your questions. I just go by, by feel. Hello, I am Samuel. I am German and Japanese and I have a street photography channel doing Q&As for you. So the question is from Uros Riznik. What Leica alternative you prefer? Digital Leicas are steep and analog become expensive after a decent glass and a lot of rolls of film. So I, what would you suggest as a good cheaper option? I really love their glass and how they render colors and also ergonomics. Well, you ask me, I don't know. Oh, hey, how are you, like M6? <laughs> if I was Samuel, I would say maybe a Minolta CLE. Maybe that camera would be pretty good. You're basically getting like a glass um, with. Okay, shut up, I will do it. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so like alternatives, um, for me personally, I, I think the Minolta CLE is the one that I have. Uh, is for me the best like alternative. Um, there's also uh, the Konica Hexa RF, I think. Um, what else? Voidlander Besser, Zeiss Icon or something. But you know, I, I have no experience uh, with them. And Canon, I think Canon P or something like that. So in terms of digital rangefinders, there's only Leica. Yeah, there's only the Leica, like MD, and um, I mean all the other Leica digital cameras, M10, M8, M9. All I can say to that is. No, it's open. No. no. Oh. <laughs> so this no. is not enough. You need way more money to get a get a Leica. Oh, and please never buy this camera because um, 
that's why I, I'm not showing this camera on my channel that often because you will raise the price so please <laughs> don't buy it it's so hard to get them is street photography in the US as good as Europe besides just NYC um, I don't know I've never been to uh, New York or the US yet um, but Jay lived in LA and New York right so maybe you should answer it so here's a guy who lived in LA and New York so. uh, yeah lived in New York for a couple years mm. I actually didn't do street photography there but everybody knows uh, mm. LA is actually really cool yeah. um, Venice Beach you get a lot of crazy people so my street photography walk would I would go to Abbott I would go to Abbott Kenny start in Abbott Kenny and then work my way to Venice Beach and then that's my favorite location and then I did a photo project in downtown LA so I would start in Koreatown and go to downtown LA so actually street photography in LA is pretty awesome but again I don't know about Dallas, Seattle, Chicago, New York obviously, um, Boston I'm sure there's a lot of really big cities with really good street photographers <laughs> Asked Elska, if you could only shoot in one city in the entire world, where would it be? Um, I'm pretty sure my favorite city is London for street photography because everyone is really relaxed, no one really cares and everyone is friendly and I like the colors, you know, there's a lot of red and blue. Yeah, I think London is my favorite city. London? London, dude, get over here, hold on. Tell them New York. Okay, now that I've been here, um, yeah, not, New York is pretty nice. New York is, yeah. New York is pretty yeah. nice or New York is better? Okay, it's better. <laughs> <laughs> Next question from Mark Hall. Uh, I know you said that Positive Film is your favorite film simulation, but what are your thoughts on the new Fujifilm simulation classic NAC? Do you think it's similar at all to Positive Film on the GR3? No, it's definitely not the same. Uh, it's totally different, but I think I like it uh, from what I've seen so far. It looks very film-like, maybe the most film-like of all the Fujifilm film simulations. I haven't used it um, myself yet, so I don't know if it's my favorite of all the Fujifilm film simulations, but positive film, still my number one. Hey Sam, this is a good shot. It looks very cinematic. Uh, where's the zoom? There's no zoom. Oh. Next question is from uh, Eru. I want to know more about your personal life. Uh, you were born in Japan, but live in Germany. What did you do at school? Do you skate? <laughs> I see you're always wearing uh, Nike SB stuff. Congrats on the milestone. Yeah, thanks, Eero. Yeah, so first of all, uh, I was born in Japan, in Kamakura, but uh, I stayed there for a year, and then my parents and I, we moved to Hamburg, Germany. What did I do in school? Um, I don't know. I was just a regular kid uh, drawing manga. So yeah, I, was, I, I wanted to become a, a manga artist oh, really? yeah yeah I, I was drawing a lot and then I started photography uh, and then I started communications designs which basically is graphic design and yeah I did skate a lot um, maybe around 10 uh, about 10 years or so but I broke my ankle and since then I can't really do jumps a lot and also I can't walk for a full day uh, my feet starts hurting yeah, my ankle broke but not in a piece it was like scattered into little pieces and there's actually a youtube video where you can see me breaking my foot oh. but i will not show it here <laughs> but you can find it if you're a good stalker then <laughs> you can probably find it so yeah i did do i did skate maybe i have some clips that i can show here SP thing is uh, I, I never buy like uh, from big brands or so the thing is my my brother still skates and he's a professional skateboarder and he's sponsored by Nike SP so every time you see me uh, wearing a uh, Nike clothes or uh, fashion then it comes from my brother because he gets like pff, 20 pairs of shoes per month or something like that it's crazy yeah so and it used to be the other way around like because I'm older than him and he used to get my clothes and now I'm getting his clothes. Martin Hernandez, uh, do you still do video work or photography for clients outside of YouTube or street photography? If so, how do you separate the two entities? So I used to do 
client work in the field of video production and I used to have a video production company but in this year I started doing YouTube full-time uh, I'm officially a youtuber now which feels so dirty to say <laughs> well the thing is I cannot only live off of YouTube uh, but I can't afford to do it right now because uh, I have a few sponsorships going like for example you saw maybe you saw the Skillshare, Skillshare ads on my videos and uh, right now I have uh, a collaboration with Rico, Rico and Friends. We, we are doing the GR project which is sponsored by Rico but you know if I have the time I would do client work again but who wouldn't do something that uh, they have control over you know so at the moment I'm officially a YouTube, uh, YouTuber. <laughs> Yay! Yay. <laughs> do I ever get used to it? I don't know. I'm so glad that you are here, you know? <laughs> if I have to do it on my own, I would probably do it in some dirty corner. <laughs> <laughs> like in some dark alley. Yeah. What's your favorite color setting of your GR3? Uh, let me show it to you. Here, saturation. Yeah. Do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, do you ever use burst mode on the street? And do other GR users do this? Uh, I'm not talking spray and pray, but a targeted uh, burst. Uh, on the GR, I never use burst mode because I think it's too slow. Sorry Rico, but it is a little bit too slow. But uh, yesterday, oh no, this morning, uh, I went out with uh, John Hughes, a photographer from London, and he also shoots on the GR and the GR2. And this morning we went to, to a lake in, in Hyde Park, and there was a guy jumping into the uh, lake, and he, got, uh, he shot that moment on burst, and he got like a moment, this guy over the water, and then like almost in the water, like right before he dips in. So you can use it. When I saw him doing this today, I thought maybe I should give it another try, but personally I don't use it. It's, it's like with film, you get one shot and then that's it. I recently picked up a secondhand GR-D4 as my first Rico and I'm loving it. Uh, which one was your first Rico GR? and what's a good way to get involved in the community. So my first GR was the first APS-C GR, which came out in 2013. Um, before that I was using the GXR. So if you're looking for GR users, um, I would just see who's using the GR hashtags and look if there's someone in Italy. For me, when I started shooting with my GR, um, the first three or four years, I never met someone who even knew what Rico is. <laughs> Maybe look up if, if there are any photography meetups and uh, if it's a meetup for street photography there's probably someone with the GR. Okay, next question is from uh, the Grim North. Uh, he asked What's your approach to shooting street in smaller towns rather than larger cities? Uh, what aspects of your process do you change to shoot smaller, less busy locations? That's a very good question and it's... I would say uh, when you are in a smaller town or city you don't go and look for the stuff you see in a busy city. You look for other th things. So I would do what um, photojournalists do. They research before they go on assignment. So I would yeah, try to find out as much as you can about the location. Maybe get to know the locals. And then you know, see if there are any local events, uh, fairs uh, and stuff that you don't see in bigger cities. It makes no sense that you go to a small city and you know, try to capture, I don't know, uh, a girl with a Gucci bag uh, running with a Starbucks latte in, in her hand because that's not the story of, of this city, probably. Uh, next question is from Achim. Uh, some questions are a bit strange, but it is interesting to know how you see your photographic future. Well, I want to know that too. <laughs> I definitely want to get more into doing uh, long-term projects, which I only did once in the past. Yeah, hopefully do more exhibitions I really don't have time to to think about that stuff because I'm always doing YouTube and that's kind of the struggle with being a YouTuber because you're starting to become less of a, less of an artist or photographer yeah it's difficult right now to to balance taking photos for me and not only for YouTube so I can't say much about my future but I hope 
this channel grows and uh, hopefully allows me to you know take more time off to shoot more that's basically the the, the goal and I shouldn't really complain because if I had a, like a nine to five job, I, I could only shoot after work or maybe in lunchtime. So if I can get one full day of shooting per week, that's that's totally fine for me. That's awesome. I'm going to Tokyo at the beginning of April for a week. Could you recommend any areas or local events that, from your experiences, you found really interesting photographs? And are there any areas or situations that should be avoided, taking camera out and making photos? Okay, my recommendations. Um, the thing is, I always go to the same locations, so I'm not. I'm not a local, so you better ask a local if you want to get local tips. Um, but I would go to, um, obviously you went to Shibuya. Uh, Shinjuku is nice if you want to check out uh, galleries. And if you want to buy old film cameras, uh, Shinjuku is a good spot. I don't like to shoot in Shinjuku, it's, for me it's a bit boring. I know a lot of locals love to go to uh, Kabukicho, the red light district. This is the only place where you can get punched in Japan, so be careful. And then I really like uh, Ginza. Uh, Ginza is definitely uh, a place you should check out, uh, especially on the weekend, uh, Saturday and Sunday. They open up the street for um, pedestrians. pedestrians. Yeah, so they open up the street for pedestrians, um, and it just gives you a nice opportunity to take um, pictures of people in nice dresses. A lot of people in sharp suits. Another place I really like is Ueno. Ueno is in North uh, Tokyo. Especially for, for example, night photography. I think I already posted a video about that. So you have to check that one out. A uh, really nice place, really cinematic uh, in the night. It also has a big park, which I haven't been really shooting uh, there much, but it's very nice. Uh, Yoyogi Park in Tokyo is also very nice. Everything is very nice. <laughs> So maybe uh, places you should avoid or things you should avoid um, just like with any city you visit, uh, just respect the rules, don't be an asshole. Um, like Japanese people, they are very aware of how people behave. It's very important to have good manners and uh, a little tip if you are going out to eat, never point to your food with your sticks. Like that's totally unpolite, you, you, you can't do that. You do it like this, but not like this and not with the sticks. So do that and... Be cool, be nice, be sexy, be positive. Julian asks, um, do you print your pictures? Are you interested in printing them? Uh, yes, I'm very much interested in printing my pictures. I actually do for myself uh, or to um, print pictures for my family. I was, I'm also selling prints on my website, but um, if you want to know how much I sold... <laughs> was, that, was that a pinky one or was that a zero? Uh, uh, let's not talk about oh, okay. it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm pro printing, if that was your question. <laughs> oh, it's so cold! Okay, let's do this. So this is the last question. I'm interested in how you organize your photos uh, on hard drive or in clouds. How do you edit your photos when you're on trips, laptop versus tablet? What software do you use? Man, that's a lot. This uh, could be a video in itself. Um, to make it really quick, uh, I don't use any cloud services. I have hard drives. I usually back up uh, anything twice. So two times means two different hard drives, a uh, copy of each other. So let's say I'm finished shooting, uh, I offload my files onto my computer or laptop. Then on my hard drive I have a folder for each year, so 2019. And inside that folder I have a folder for street photography and for personal stuff. And in my street photography folder I have uh, folders for each city I visited. And my file, uh, I name my files uh, for the year I took the photo. So the exact date and then what's on the photo, which camera I used and if it's film, uh, what kind of film I used. My film scans are actually better organized and uh, backed up than my digital files because on digital obviously I take much more photos. Um, so it's a bit all over the place. But usually it's a folder for the year and then whatever happens, for example, if there's a big parade outside, I would call it, you know, maybe Pride Parade. And this goes into the 2019 folder. And then if I use 
multiple cameras. I would do folders for each camera. And how do I do it on trips? Uh, I have a laptop and all my photos go onto the hard drive. So maybe I should say I have two hard drives that I bring when I travel. So two hard drives on the go and two hard drives at home. <sighs> and how do I edit my files? Um, usually I only edit my JPEGs on the phone and I keep my raw files in case I want to uh, use Photoshop or Lightroom. But it's so cold! <laughs> but I usually don't really edit my, my photos. Um, it's just a tone curve. So I don't really need Photoshop. And yeah, it's just Snapseed and InShot. InShot I use to, to crop my photos. Um, uh, also, if I post on my Instagram story, it goes through InShot. You also use InShot, right? Yep. Yeah. So yeah, it's very nice for... Me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very nice to edit your videos as well. Um, that's about it. I keep it very simple. And to be honest, I'm really happy that I shoot more film now because... Um, oh, I should mention that. For my film work, I have a big folder for my negatives. So I have sheets of um, negative holders, or what is it called? Contact sheets. Contact sheets, yeah. So I have a folder for my contact sheets. It feels nice to have a backup that you can store somewhere. Uh, that's about it. Alright, so that's it for today's Q&A. Uh, thank you so much for submitting your questions and thank you so much for supporting this channel. Uh, shout out to my Patreons. Oh yeah, and a big shout out to uh, Jay Rose and Stock Easy for helping me filming this Q&A. You can point at yourself if you want. Um, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye. Let's That's do good. one more. Let's That's do one good. more. Okay, but yeah, let's do it. It's still rolling. This is three minutes. Okay. okay. Now.